Hi, I'm Eric Perley. Let's study the gluteus tendons with ultrasound. The gluteus minimus muscle is the deepest and most anterior of the gluteal muscles. Its origin is the anterolateral aspect of the iliac bone in front of the anterior gluteal line. The anterior part of the iliac crest and the anterior superior iliac spine. The muscle fibers converge down and out to form a triangular and flattened muscular body. It ends with a tendon that slides on the greater trochanter through a serous bursa and ends on the anterior facet of the greater trochanter. There is a facial expansion of this tendon to the capsule of the coxofemoral joint and the iliofemoral ligament. It is inverted by the superior gluteal nerve derived from the sacred plexus. The gluteus minimus is abductor, internal rotator and external rotator. The gluteus medius is located behind and above the gluteus minimus that it covers almost entirely. It comes from the anterior three-fourths of the iliac crest and the underlying surface of the external iliac fossa between the two semicircular lines. The anterior superior iliac spine by a common tendon with the gluteus maximus and tensor of the fascia latter. The deep face of the deep gluteal fascia and in constant fibrous arcade stretch from the large sciatic notch to the sacroiliac joint. The arch of Broisson which extends behind the deep gluteal fascia. The muscular body has fibres that converge obliquely downwards and outwards towards the greater trochanter. It is composed of two bundles, posterior and deep, and anterior and superficial, which intercross before giving a terminal tendon. The gluteal medium has two distal tendons, the anterior tendon, which corresponds to a broad tendinous lamina, originates from the anterior two-thirds of the muscle and is inserted into the lateral facet. The strong posterior tendon of the muscle, which extends the posterior and deep body and which is inserted on the posterior superior facet of the greater trochanter. It is innerverted by its deep face by branches of the upper gluteal nerve. The gluteus medius is mainly abductor. The greater trochanter corresponds to a bone eminence of quadrilateral shape located outside the femoral neck. The superficial outer surface convex and easily palpable under the skin. The bone surface of the greater trochanter consists of four facets, anterior, lateral, posterior and posterior superior. Three of the four facets give insertion to the tendons of the gluteal muscles. The anterior facet gives insertion to the tendon of the gluteus minimus. The lateral facet gives insertion to the lateral tendinous lamina of the gluteus medius. The posterior superior facet gives insertion to the main tendon of the gluteus medius. The posterior facet is the only facet that does not give muscular tendinous insertion. This facet is in contact with the great gluteal muscle, the iliotibial tract, and the superficial trochanteric bursa. Gluteus maximus is the largest and most powerful of the body's muscles. The large gluteal muscle is inserted into the posterior fifth of the iliac crest the outer surface of the ilium posterior to the posterior gluteal line, the thoracolumbar fascia, the lateral sacral crest, the lateral margins of the sacrum and coccyx, the posterior surface of the sacrotubal ligament and the gluteal fascia. His muscular body is thick and is formed of two superficial and deep bundles. It is separated respectively from the ischial and trochanteric tuberositis by homonymous synovial exchanges. The insertion of the superficial bundle is done on the posterior border of the iliotibial tract and that of the deep bundle on the gluteal tuberosity of the femur. It is inverted by the lower gluteal nerve. It is extensor and lateral rotator of the thigh.
In the standing position, he is stabilizing the pelvis, preventing his antiversion in synergy with the abdominal muscles. The iliotibial tract is fibrous reinforcement from the lateral aspect of the gluteal fascia to the buttock and fascia latter to the thigh. It is born from the lateral side of the iliac crest where it is discreetly thickened and then extends downwards to cover the gluteus medius muscle, then the lateral face of the greater trochanter from which it is separated by the trochanteric bursa. The superficial fibres of the great gluteal muscle are inserted behind and the lower fibres of the fascia latter tensor are inserted. It is inserted on the infracondylar tuberacle of Gerdi on the lateral side of the tibia. The tensor muscle of fascia latter is the most anterior muscle of the lateral region of the hip. The exploration of the gluteal tendons is performed with a patient placed in lateral decubitus position. The great trochanter is palpated. The superficial probe is placed in an actual position at its level. The three anterior, lateral and posterior superior trochanteric facets are identified. On the anterior facet is inserted the tendon of the gluteus minimus. We will perform an anterior vertical oblique rotation of the probe in order to visualize the tendon over its entire height. On the lateral trochanteric facet is inserted the anterior tendon lamina of the gluteus medius. A vertical 90 degree rotation of the probe will allow the tendon to be viewed over its entire height and emphasis. On the posterior superior trochanteric facet of the greater trochanter is inserted the main posterior tendon of the gluteal medius. A posterior vertical oblique rotation of the probe will allow to visualize the distal part of the tendon and its enthesis. The study of the proximal enthesis of the gluteal fascia and the tensor of the fascia latter is performed at the level of the iliac crest by placing the probe perpendicular to it. The enthesis is visible in the form of a fine fibrillar structure, which runs vertically downwards to the surface of the gluteus maximus and is positioned at the superficial part of the greater trochanter, from which it is separated by the superficial trochanteric bursa. The possibility of a hip lateral snapping is appreciated by actual section at the level of the greater trochanter. Dynamic maneuvers are performed in slight flexion and extension of the hip to assess the passage of the bursa under the iliotibial tract. Example of tendinopathy of the gluteus minimus with partial tear. The tendon has a thickened, hypoechoic and moderately dedifferentiated appearance, reflecting chronic tendinitis, associated with an anechoic pseudo-liquid linear lesion in the longitudinal axis of the tendon corresponding to a partial tear. Example of complete rupture of the lateral lamina of the medius gluteus. No visibility of the lateral lamina of the medius gluteus replaced by a fluid effusion in continuity with the superficial trochanteric bursa. Corresponding coronal PDFS MRI scan confirms the complete distal tendon rupture. Example of proximal enthesopathy with partial tear of the gluteal fascia. The gluteal fascia tendon enthesis has a thickened hypoechoic and dedifferentiated appearance with peritendinous Doppler hyperemia associated with an enechoic intratendinous linear lesion corresponding to a partial tear. Mm -hmm.